This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, and welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This program is brought to you, brought to you by Think Tech Hawaii, the Small Business Development Center, and the U.S. Small Business Administration. My name is Dennis Boyd, and I am the director of the West Hawaii Small Business Development Center. And our office covers the entire western half of the uh, island, the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, and our office is in Kailua, Kona. I, my client here with me today is Donna Cavalier, and she's the owner of Tiki Tan Salon in Kailua, Kona. I thought Donna would be a good candidate for this program because of the passion she has in her business. Uh, it's really inspiring. And when she first came to me, I have to tell you, I, I thought this whole idea was a little crazy. I mean, a tanning salon in Hawaii, uh, it's sort of like selling ice to the Eskimos, I thought. But I'm very happy that Donna has proved me wrong, uh, both by uh, the success of her business and by just her persuasion about how good a product she has. So uh, welcome, Donna. Thank you for having me. Sure. Glad you're here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to go into business for yourself and why do you pick this particular kind of business? Well, I wanted to go into business for myself because I wanted to work for myself. Uh -huh. I've worked for I've worked for some great people in the past, but I've also worked for some not so great people. And I wanted an opportunity to um, provide customer service to the fullest extent. Uh -huh. um, and I, I felt like I could do that going uh -huh. into business for myself. Um, especially with a tanning salon in Hawaii, because it's the only one in Hawaii um, on the Big Island. Right. And it's been very successful in other destination um, uh, vacation places. Mm -hmm. For instance, Florida is the capital of tanning salons, and, uh, and it's always sunny in Florida. That's so strange, um, too. Yeah, it's a very similar kind of place as Hawaii. Yeah, and I, I thought there was a niche for it here. I mean, you, you know, you moved to Hawaii with all the grand um, ideas of being on the beach every day and enjoying your lives and vacationing every day. But when you get here, you realize you have to work two or three jobs right. to maintain your lifestyle. Right. And getting to the beach gets less and less as time goes on. Right. So, you know, people still want to have that nice, healthy glow um, and enjoy their lives at the same time. Right. You were also positioning this for the vacation or the, uh, the wedding party niche as well, right? Right, right. And that's still, we're still working on that. Um, I've been working with a lot of the wedding planners and such for the uh, destination weddings. Um, it's a great benefit to them be because of one, they can get rid of their tan lines or get that little glow before they, before they have their, right. you know, yeah. their day. Um, but also uh, with the body contour light that we offer, that helps them to lose that last five pounds before they have to get in that wedding dress. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned that, uh, and I know you do, it's not just tanning beds. Can you just sort of give us the menu of the kind of services you provide in your, in your business? Right. So we have the tanning beds. The great thing about them is they're very low in UVA and UVB, so it's a much safer alternative. Um, we have red light therapy beds, which is amazing for the skin, um, as well as uplifting to the mood and a natural um, antidepressant and immune, immune booster. Um, but then we have the body contour light, which is also red light therapy. Uh, it penetrates to a much deeper level than our bed, actually getting to the fat cell, and you lose fat at the speed of light. Wow. Um, on top of that, we offer massage therapy, and then we also have a Dr. Christina Satellite Office, where her nurse offers vitamin infusion, injections, and IVs. Okay. So you're more of a, a spa kind of environment Absolutely. than just a ser tanning service. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. What, what were the big... Going into business is a challenge for anybody. It's a, it's a big step going from working for, for somebody to being your own boss and being the place where the buck stops. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges you faced in starting your business? The biggest challenge was uh, working with the building department. Um, <laughs> they don't give you a, a list to check off. Um, it's uh, figuring it out as you go. And, um, you know, you have to be extremely diligent and staying on top of everything uh, with the building department. And, you know, rules get made as you go. So it's, it's, it's constantly catching up um, right. and, and trying to do the right thing. Um, it was a longer process than I had anticipated. And um, I, I hear that a lot with right. businesses in, in Hawaii. But um, the greatest thing was you were there to help guide me. Oh. Um, when I first started, I, I had no idea where to even start from. You know, I applied for the license, got the tax ID number, and then I was stumped. You know, what do I do next? And right. then you came into play and were uh, able to help me with the entire business plan, 
um, guide me through that as well as um, the financial and projections um, for the business. Um, clear down to the perfect loan agent to help me get the oh, loan to start the business. Yeah, yeah, that's something we do for all our clients is not only help them prepare the documents uh, that they need to start the business, the business plan and the, the financial package, but also try to pick a, a, a financing source for them that's going to be amenable to what they want to do. So thanks, yes. for, the, thanks for the nice things you said. Um, what about personally? I mean, that's all the logistics about getting started. Did you find it personally difficult to, to sort of get in gear or to, to be responsible for everything? Actually, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I just took the ball and ran with it, yeah. um, you know, which is just my personality anyways. But um, uh, I was so excited about everything that I was doing and it, you know, it took on a personality of its own. When we first started out, it was just going to be a tanning salon and, and it just kept growing into more and better things. Um, more red light therapy, the body contour light, the vitamin infusion, all of those things are about health and, and, and wellness. Yeah. Um, it's mind, body, skin wellness all the way around. And, you know, and, and as far as what we started out with, you know, what it was going to look like, you know, it started out originally as just being kind of a basic tanning salon that you would see on the mainland. Um, but by the time we finished, it turned into a full salon and spa type of service and environment. Mm, okay. So you can see, this is what I was talking about, about the passion. Once she gets, starts talking about her company, she gets pretty passionate about it. Um, what do you think makes your business stand out? Um, you know, you talked a little bit about customer service earlier, and I know you've been in the uh, businesses, retail businesses that have had customer service kinds of, uh, important customer service components to them. What's your take on that? Where are you coming from with customer service? Customer service is really important to me. I mean, down to, I mean, if you go into a restaurant and somebody's, your server's having a bad day, you can feel it, you're not really, they want you to hurry up and get away from the table, go pay your bill, leave. They're nice about it, but the, the love isn't there. And this has given me an opportunity to really show the love to people. I mean, everybody needs to be loved. Everybody needs to feel beautiful um, and be told they're, they're loved and, they're, and that they're beautiful. And they get that when they come into my salon. They get that from the moment they walk in the door to the moment that they leave and all the in-betweens. Um, it's a sanctuary there. It's comfortable. It's inviting. Um, the girls that I have working there for me are wonderful. Um, everybody gets that special attention. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody feels important when they come in. Um, it's just, it, it goes above and beyond just customer service. You know, we all have the customer service handbook, mm -hmm. but this is much more. It's, it's more about really um, having empathy and compassion for people. Um, understanding, listening to them, and 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 being there for them, mm -hmm. um, helping them have a great experience while they're there. So you're kind of a little oasis. Absolutely. In downtown Kona, huh? I like going there. <laughs> you know, well, that's nice. you know that's the most important part, I guess. Letting your business you're in. Um, as your, I mean, your business is relatively new, um, and so there's the challenges of getting started in a business, uh, just getting opening the door. What's the, what's the phase like after you open the door? How do you get customers? How did you get customers? How did you spread the word about your services and get that, um, well, repeat customers, I guess, came from your customer service, but what, what did you do? What was that like for you? Um, a lot of it was, was word of mouth and me getting out in front of people. You know, so I started at one end of the city and worked my way you know, clear to the, the north end. And um, you know, going to all of the hotels, talking to the, all, the, all the concierge, wedding planners, stopping at all the salons, um, interacting with people, uh, you know, just constantly talking about the business with everybody and inviting people in for a, a, a free visit, you know, come just check mm -hmm. us out. Mm -hmm. But most of it was personalized. It was very, you know, one-on-one -on -one with people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done some marketing, you know, I've done a radio ad. Um, uh, we did the newspaper, new business. Um, right, right. Uh, Thing in the Hawaii, what was that, Hawaii? Uh, spotlight West, on business in yeah. West Hawaii today. Um, but, but most of it's come just word of mouth, uh -huh. which okay. you know, is typical in Hawaii. Yeah, especially, especially in our Kona. small community. Yeah. yeah, Coconut Wireless. Did you have any reactions like my reaction? My reaction when you first broached this idea to me was like, what, what are you, what are you talking about? When you started to, to go out and, and talk about your business to potential customers and get that word of mouth going. Did you have people who were like sort of giving you some pushback about 
what do we need that for here? Like Anything people like laughing that? at me. Laughing you know, at you. you know, yeah. What, tanning in Hawaii? Are you <laughs> yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was nonstop. And, you know, my answer, my, my response is, you know, do you have a job? And when was the last time you went to the beach? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, that stopped a lot of people, you know, dead in their tracks where they're kind of like, oh, yeah, it has been a while since I've been to the beach. But it's not just about the tanning. It's, it's about the red light therapy. It's about feeling good. It's about having the best skin naturally that you can. Um, everything that my salon has to offer is natural. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even the products that I have, they're as natural as you can get and still have anti-aging ingredients in them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, where was I at? <laughs> the pushback. <laughs> pushback. The pushback. <laughs> the lack of pushback. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So everybody you know, wants to look young. They want to look tan. They want to look healthy. Right. And then, you know, at first, too, there was a lot of girls that were coming in, women, and, and uh, not telling their friends where they were getting their tan from. And then pretty soon they were running into each other in the salon. And oh, a lot really? of these people were the people that were pushing back on, on the idea of oh, tanning they're secret, in Hawaii. They're closet oh, tanners. yeah, they are. <laughs> they wow. are. But we're very confidential. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, it sounds like, uh, you know, it's, it sounds like you, got, you hit a, a, a nerve when you hit the ground running and, and, and really are sort of capitalizing on that pretty well. Yeah. So. And I got to tell you, your 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 physical plant, your facility is really beautiful, and that's it sort of adds to that sort of sanctuary kind of feeling. Um, and I know you did a, that was sort of a do-it-yourself kind of thing. Yeah, I did. You it. and your your partner Brian. Mm -hmm. Yes. What was uh, you did, decided not to call a contractor? You were going to go full steam ahead yourself to to do all that stuff, huh? Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is I mean, that I something you regret, or would no, you? No, not at all. I, I mean, I. I would um, I would probably hire a contractor the next time yeah. um, to be in charge of the whole build out process. But as far as the design, um, you know, that was Brian and I, you know, our idea together, um, and you know, it, it, it all came together nicely. I mean, we started with one color to to work around, and you know, everything just kept getting nicer. The front desk got nicer, the back wall got nicer, right, um, all of the right. accents and and things that we added, you know, the waterfall. Um, getting those things to the island was challenging as well, but um, uh, yeah, down to the signature scent essential oils that I use every day are, are amazing. You can't not feel good when you're around those essential oils. Right. So the environment is really, was really an important part of your business plan. Yes. Of getting, getting your, your business off the ground. Great. Um, was there anything in our work together? I mean, you, talk, you very nicely talked about the things we did together. Um, what were the, in the planning process, the, the, the sort of the, the groundwork and the logistics we had to do to get you ready? Um, what were the things, what was your biggest barrier? And is there anything I could have done to have helped you better? No feedback for me. Uh, you did awesome. I mean, you rocked the whole thing. Every, every little piece of information I came up with, if there was any kind of a hole in it at all, you saw it and redirected me back for more research. And that helped me be a better owner. It helped me know even more about my product. I mean, I've done a lot of research on what I have to offer, okay. but um, you made me dig deeper. And, Great. and that has just benefited me. I mean, when I'm walking okay. people through, I'm giving somebody a tour, um, I have that research and that knowledge behind me um, because you sent me back to the drawing Great. board. Well, thank you. On that positive note about me, <laughs> we'll take a break for a short period of time. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Choose to treat it with the help of a physical therapist. Physical therapists treat pain through movement and exercise. No warning labels required. And you get to actively participate in your care. Choose to improve your health without the risks of opioids. Choose physical therapy. Hello. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Okay. Welcome back to our discussion with Donna Cavalier, from Tiki Tan Salon in Kailua Kona. Donna, okay, now your doors are open. Now you're on the path to success, uh, and we hope. And what do you think, you're an entrepreneur now, actual, not a wannabe an entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur. 
What do you think are the pluses and minuses of that role? And I know there's a lot of them. I've been in that, those shoes. What do you think? Uh, the, the pluses are you get to do things the way you want to, and hopefully you do them right and, and that right sounds like by everyone. That sounds like it's really important for you because you're, you're, you're sort of in, uh, in control of your, your work. Right. I mean, I can build it, and, you know, and I did, um, but it's, it's hiring the right people. It's hiring the people that care enough about me and Brian mm -hmm. and, and care enough about my business to project my business the way I want to project it. So knowing those people to hire is, is one of the, the skills you need to have as an entrepreneur, having some sort of gut feeling about it. Right. Especially, you know, it's really hard to hire employees, and it's really hard to keep employees. And I've been really fortunate in all of my careers um, to have really great employees. Um, these two that I have right now, they actually were my clients before they were oh, my really? employees. I so I, I got a chance yeah. to see who they were as, as yeah. in their normal everyday life. Yeah. Um, and they have uh, surprised me every day with, with how amazing and great they are. Um, but then you got to treat them right. You know, mm -hmm. and you have to respect them and, and be um, empathetic to their needs and, and what they're looking for and, and be caring. You know, so I mean, you can pretend to be and pretend to care about your employees, and they right. feel it. They feel the difference. I know I have throughout my careers. Well, that's especially important in, in where we live in West Hawaii, where there's such a tight labor market, and they don't like working for you. They can just go down the street and get a job somewhere else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what are the kinds of things you do to you know to show your to sort of generate that employee loyalty and you know, respect them like you say. What I truly do? respect them. I honestly do. I care about them. I love them. Um, I, I am there for them. If they need me, they know this, you know. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is, is let me know. And, and I am 100% theirs. Um, I try to take care of them. What have you done? Have you done anything in terms of, you know, the, their physical working experience, like hours or pay? Or, you know, how, what, how do you work that? How do you, why does somebody want to work for you other than the fact that you are who you are? rather than, you know, the guy down the street, the lady down the street. Because I am who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I cool. honestly care about these people. I honestly yeah. love them. And the, I feel the same way about my clients that come in. Uh -huh. um, you, have to, you, you have to be grateful. For what? For the people that, that are in your lives mm -hmm. um, and that, that come through your lives. And I'm grateful mm -hmm. for every single one of them, um, all my clients uh, and my employees. And when you... You can't pretend to be grateful. You either are or you aren't. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I am, and I show that to them, hopefully, on a daily basis. And if I'm not, let me know. I'll come back mm -hmm. and uh, make sure I'm, I'm mm -hmm. you know, treating them the way that they deserve to be treated. So authenticity Absolutely. is a big deal for you. Um, we've talked a little bit about the skills you need as an entrepreneur. And I know an entrepreneur wears a lot of hats. Um, it's where the buck stops, and you're trying to cut corners on costs frequently. What kind of skills did you bring to this phase in your life that you think were really key in your success as an entrepreneur? My past experience in the management positions I've had um, have, have helped a lot. Uh, one, doing property, being in property management for so long, working with financials, working with budgets, uh, that definitely helped uh, come into play and, and keeping me on track, as well as you reminding me to go back to my business plan when I'm, I'm getting too big for my oh, riches. Oh, you did that, great. I did, I okay. did. Um, and, um, you know, and, and the restaurant, managing restaurants, that was huge because uh -huh. there's such a turnover in employees and getting them to stay for long periods of time um, and, and being loyal to you. Um, you know, that was definitely beneficial in, in the business I'm doing now. A lot of similarities between, you know, the, in that kind of industry and your kind of industry. You want to you want to have people have a nice experience so they come back because it's it's not something that they need to sign a contract for or anything like that. They right. just, as the mood strikes them, yeah, they want to go where they had a, a, good, a good experience. Okay. Um, Okay, this has been quite a journey for you. We've talked about, you and I personally have talked about different phases of your life, and I know this is a new phase for you. What did this part of your life journey, your, your business journey, teach you that you, you would like to pass on to other people who might be considering a similar kind of big step? Any, help any, me out here. <laughs> help you out, okay. What made you succeed that you think other people should know? 
just being a go-getter. You, you can't stop. You know, it's a 24-hour job. I've been very fortunate to um, uh, not overwork myself, um, which is really important in this. Um, but I'm losing my train of thought here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's a, it's, you're talking about personal characteristics that really make make you successful as an entrepreneur. So you, some of those Your things. brain can't stop. You've always got to you know, reinvent yourself. You've always got to come up with new ideas. You've always got to add new things, always making it better. So you're waking up at 2 in the morning with, uh, no, this I don't, is what I'm going to do? I don't do that. No, I, I, I take don't cortisol okay. manager so I can <laughs> okay. sleep at night. Good for you. Um, but uh, no, you do. You always have to be on the go, and you always have to have your eyes open. Um, it's not, you can't just start a business and then, and then fall off. You always have to be actively involved at some point. Mm -hmm. and, so you um, can't be an absentee owner. I don't think so, especially yeah. in a small town like Kona. Yeah. You know, people want to see you there. You know, yeah. I, I'm there almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to be there more than I am sometimes. Um, but you know, especially with the body contour light now, I'm doing all of those sessions myself. So it kind of takes me away from the front a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do. You need to be actively involved with your employees, with your clients, with so your business. It's not a part-time thing. No. Not, not, for <laughs> not for the week. Not for the week. I heard I heard somebody say that uh, owning a business is a contact sport. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Get some bruises from it for sure. So um, you're, you're on the path to success for your with your business. I mean, you've, you're relatively new. And you've had a phenomenal success. Success, um, proving me wrong, like I said in the beginning. But in addition to the money factor. How do you define success for yourself in this business? When, when, are you, when would you sit back and say, ah, Tiki Tan Salon is a success? Or do you at this point? I, I do. Um, every single day. Every single day. Every single day, the more people I make happy, and having people leave my salon with a smile on their face tells me that I have been successful that day. And it's one day at a time. Yeah. Um, that's very important to me. And, and, I, and I've achieved that. I, I, and I, I strive to achieve that every single day. Mm -hmm. Great. So it's an ongoing path for you. Absolutely. It has to be. Because yeah. if, you're, if you don't, then you're dropping the ball somewhere. You have to strive every day to be the best. Okay. So did you have that kind of, is that the same kind of dedication you had as an employee? Or Most is it of the a time. It, it is different because it's my baby now. Yeah. Um, I have been fortunate enough to work for some amazing people. Um, and I'm just going to say it, Duke from Duke's Seafood and Chowder House in Seattle. Okay. Uh, one of the most amazing entrepreneurs I've ever worked for in my life, uh -huh. as well as Greg, his general manager, who was my boss at the time. Um, amazing people that allowed me to be myself and to take the ball and run with it and to give the kind of customer service that I wanted to give and back me up. And that, that's re really when I found that, that true passion for what it feels like to offer good customer service and really care about your clients. Mm -hmm. So do you think that whole emphasis on customer service, I know it's, very, it's obviously very important for you and something you've talked a lot about here today. Is it something you find rare in, in our little community? I mean, we're a tourist community. Uh, we have a small local population and a lot of tourists who come and go. Um, so a lot of our businesses are geared more to that non-repeat customer. Right. So it sort of lends itself maybe to people being more brusque but do you feel that your, your brand of, of customer service is different than what you see out there? Or do you, do you see, how do you see that in our community? Um, you know, it's, there is good customer service out there. I, I get it all the time. I yeah. you know, great places that I go, and people are absolutely wonderful, and I appreciate and value them for that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I don't think people want to really take the time to care like they should. It takes away from the business, they think. It takes away from their time working their financials. It takes away, mm -hmm. it, you're spending too much time on that table, or you're, you're giving too much to this person and not to that person. And mm -hmm. it's just, you just give them all love. <laughs> just Across the board, huh? Yeah. yeah. That's simple. It yeah. doesn't take any experience or anything else to just show the love. Oh. And, and I'm adamant about that. It's important. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's what makes me successful every single day, being grateful, showing the love, and, and valuing and appreciating everybody that's around Spreading me. Spreading that sunshine. Absolutely. <laughs> Spreading the sunshine. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Where are you going? What's your plans for the future? Where, where's Tiki Tan Salon heading? Uh, what embellishments are you anticipating? What's going on with you? 
Um, we are definitely looking at opening more salons. Really? Um, we've been getting a lot of interest from the other side of the island. And, the cloudy uh, side. Yes, the cloudy <laughs> side. Um, I have women that come over every week to use uh, Tiki Tan Salon and the, the things that we have to offer there. And, um, and I think that they would, they would benefit from our services on that side. So we're looking at it, but we're looking at a couple of different areas you know, as well. Um, so I would say within the next year, uh, we definitely are planning to open the second salon. Wow, that's a pretty fast expansion. Well, loans permitting. <laughs> <laughs> Got to come back to the office. We'll, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on this again. Um, do you have any, um, do you do any specials, any kind of customer things like twofers or anything like that that make cut, makes customers, promotional things, that helps you to get cust those repeat customers that... Absolutely. So yeah, we did um, on the radio ad uh, last month. We were doing a two for one for new clients only, and then um, and, and I never know what my specials are going to be before the day I'm having them. I don't. Sit yeah, you and, come up with them. I, on yeah, the I don't sit moment? and ponder. You know, like yeah. oh, I think I'm going to have a special next week. No, um, it, the mood strikes me, and I have a special. So we were doing the two for one on the radio ad, and that was for new clients only. Then I felt guilty because right. my regular clients, the people that come to see me all the time, they deserved something too. Yeah. So at that point, um, I, I pulled up a list of, of all the inactive, of course I posted it in the salon for the active clients, but anybody that was inactive, I had my girls call everyone and um, offer them personally 25% off of, of their next package. Okay. Um, one, to get them back in the door, um, but two, you know, it was a valued client special, so it was just showing how we value them and it was a little more than I typically will offer on a special, but um, I felt that it was fair at the time. Um, but you know, right now we have 20% off the contour lights, which is an amazing savings. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm always trying to come up with new and different things. Uh, not too many specials because I want everybody waiting for them. But right, right, <laughs> you right, know, right. Um, definitely. So you're thinking, on your, you're thinking on your feet all the, the time. The specials with that, so. that I offer are more to show people that I'm, I value them. You know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yes, I get new people in, and they just so happen to take advantage of the special because I have one going on but right. it's you know me posting on Facebook and the Instagram and and things like that that are letting our regular customers know that hey I'm giving you an opportunity to take advantage of one of our specials okay great and we have Iron Man coming up you have anything yes. coming up for that um, you know we're, we're just started working on that this last week and um, I have a, one of my clients actually um, works with Iron Man every year so I'm gonna talk to her about doing some advertising but we just made up some flyers to put around more oriented towards um, the red light therapy because that is so great for um, muscle recovery, um, joint and muscle pain, inflammation, circulation, and, and I think they'll benefit from that greatly. Yeah, there must be some muscle pain associated Absolutely. with that, I would imagine. Well, good luck. Well, thank you so much, Donna. Uh, this has been really, really delightful. Uh, you're really, as I said at the beginning of this, very passionate about what you, what you do and it really comes through. And I think uh, you're really a shining star in the area of customer service and, and knowing what it takes to make a, to make a customer come back. Um, and I wish you a lot of success with this, with this business. Uh, and you really have hit the, hit the ground running. You really surprised me how fast it's grown. Did it surprise you? It, you know, I know, I knew it in my head. You but, knew it. You know, you knew it, it. it's always scary. You know, I mean, starting a new business is is very scary. It's there's always failure, and nobody wants to fail. Um, right. But if you just keep on going, yeah, and have that confidence. Absolutely. Which sounds like you have it in spades to uh, to share. So. Well, thank you for very much for having me here today. It was great. And, uh, See, and you got I'm, a chance I'm, to explain all your services, and it wasn't, yes. it wasn't that bad. No, it was, it was awesome. Start, yeah, great. So, uh, well, I think that's about all we have to say. Um, you know, Donna, Donna was a client of ours at the Small Business Development Center in, in West Hawaii. And as I said, we, we cover the entire uh, half of the island, the western half of the island, all the way from the top in Waimea down to the bottom in uh, South Point Kau, and we do see clients uh, throughout those areas. They don't have to come to our office. Uh, you, I know, came to our office, but uh, so I just want to throw that out there for any other clients or any other would-be wannabe entrepreneurs who are interested in uh, in starting a business and you know, sort of sharing in the confidence that that you Donna has. So that's it. So. Uh, thank you. You've been watching uh, Adventures in Small Business. 
uh, brought to you by um, ThinkTech Hawaii and the Small Business Development Center, SBDC. And we have offices throughout the islands. We are on, uh, in addition to Kona, we're on Hilo, and we're also in Oahu and, and uh, Maui and in Kauai. So uh, drop in to see us. You can make an appointment online. And we're also spot this show is also sponsored by the U.S. Small Business Development Center. So thank you.